In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, God's good people. Today is Wednesday, the 31st of May, 2023. It is Wednesday of the 8th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year A. Today is the Feast of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth. Grant us, we pray, that faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, we may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading has an option, either from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 18, or from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 16. The responsorial psalm is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 12. The response to the psalm is, Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. I read, from the gospel. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his posterity forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Change the lives of those you visit by your visit. Change the lives of those you visit by your visit. Dearly beloved of the Lord, today is the feast of the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is the second joyful mystery. We remember the day the Blessed Virgin Mary went to visit her kinswoman, Elizabeth. It happened immediately after Mary had received the message 
the good news that she was to be the mother of Jesus from the archangel Gabriel. In the course of their discussion, the archangel told her that her kinswoman Elizabeth was herself pregnant for six months, for nothing is impossible for God to do. Immediately after the angel departed from her, Mary, we are told in today's gospel, left with haste to go visit Elizabeth. I guess, in my opinion, for two reasons. First, to go to be of help to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was well on in years, much more than Mary. And hearing from the archangel that she was already six months gone, Mary immediately knew, because of the kind of woman that she was, that Elizabeth would need help. So she left to go be of help to Elizabeth. And we are told in today's gospel, she stayed with her for three months before returning. You can do the arithmetic. Elizabeth was six months gone. Mary went and visited her and stayed with her for three months, meaning she left only after Elizabeth would have had her child. Therefore, it could be right therefore to say that Mary went to visit Elizabeth first to be of assistance. The second reason could be to share the good news, the joy of her good news, that she was to be the mother of Jesus Christ. But dear friends, what I want us to get from this episode of the visit is that it was a visit, but much more. It was not just any ordinary visit. It was much more than a visit. It was a meeting, an encounter. Mary visited Elizabeth. She carried Jesus in her womb to them. She brought joy to them, we are told, as Elizabeth heard her greeting, she was filled with the Holy Spirit, and the child in her womb leaped for joy. Mary's visit brought joy, brought the Holy Spirit, because she brought Jesus to the home of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Elizabeth and Mary came together. It was an encounter of two women. It was an encounter of two promises, the promise of a Savior and the promise of of a child who was to be the herald of the Savior. It was an encounter of two missions, the mission of heralding the Savior and the mission of saving God's people, as seen in John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. It was an encounter of two mothers, the mother of the Savior and the mother of the herald of the Savior. So it was not just any ordinary visit. It was an encounter. Elizabeth encountered the mother of her Lord. John the Baptist encountered his master. In fact, in that visit, Jesus came to visit his people. We are told after John the Baptist was born, in the song of joy of Zechariah, known as the Benedictus, Zechariah said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited his people and redeemed them. The loving kindness of the heart of our God who visits us like the dawn from on high. Jesus came to visit his people. In that visit, beloved, when Jesus came into the presence of Elizabeth and John the Baptist, he brought joy. In that visit, we encountered two women full of humility. In that visit, we see Mary very humble. Mary's humility is found in this visit. Of the two, we could say that she had received the greater news. She was to bear the greater of the two. She was to be the mother of the Savior. Yet, despite receiving such great news, she humbled herself and went to visit Elizabeth. Many of us, were we in Mary's shoes, we would have said it is Elizabeth to come visit us. After all, we had received the greater news. Yet, Mary humbled herself, and we see it in the words of the Magnificat. The Lord has regarded the very, very humble estate of his handmaid, and for this reason, all generations will call her blessed. 
we also find the humility of Elizabeth. She was well on in years. After all, she would have said Mary was the one to come visit her. But listen to her words. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? What mark of humility. In that visit, we find recognition and acceptance of rule. Yes, Mary recognized in Elizabeth her kinswoman and went to visit. Yes, John the Baptist recognized his savior and master and leaped for joy. Elizabeth accepted and recognized Mary as the mother of her Lord and Savior. Dear God's good people, what practical lessons can we learn from today's Feast of the Visitation? Your visit can change lots in the lives of those you visit. When you go visiting others, change their lives positively. Do you bring Jesus to those you visit? Or do you carry gossips to them? Do they encounter Jesus in you when you go to visit them? Are you visiting and do, do your visits bring lots of meaning to those whom you visit? Beloved, you may be visiting, but you do not bring joy and meaning to those whom you visit. No wonder when you leave, they thank God you have left. Bring meaning. Do not just go to waste time in useless chats over food and drink. Bring meaning. Are your visits meaningful or just a waste of time over useless chats over food and drink? It is also for us to ask ourselves, do we go to visit Jesus? Do we visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament? Do we visit Jesus who is present in the Eucharist waiting for us? And finally, it is also for us to recognize the time of the Lord's visitation. When Mary went to visit Elizabeth, it was also Jesus who went to visit his people. Remember the words of Zechariah. Yes, the rising sun has come to visit us. It is also a time for the Lord's visitation. The Lord wants to visit us. How prepared are you to welcome the Lord? In the Gospel of Luke chapter 19 verse 44, we are told that Jesus wept over Jerusalem, prophesying that the time would come for her to be destroyed, when one stone would not be left on another. Why? Because she did not recognize and welcome the Lord at his visitation to them. Jesus had brought the good news to them. He visited them when he brought the good news, but they did not recognize and they did not welcome him. Do you also recognize the time of the Lord's visitation and do you welcome him? The Lord visits us when we have good friends who give us good advice. But we decide not to welcome him and we decide not to listen. We decide not to open our doors to welcome the Lord. When he comes to you and talks to your conscience, telling you it is time for you to reconcile with your wife, to be married in church, to do good and to avoid evil, do we recognize the Lord and welcome him at the time of his visitation? If not, beloved, we may end the risk like Jerusalem that the Lord comes to visit us. People come to visit us and bring the Lord to us, but we refuse to welcome him. Do you welcome the Lord when he comes to visit you in his word? When we listen to gospels like this, Jesus comes to visit us. He wants to enter into our hearts, into our homes, into our families. Do we welcome the Lord and recognize him at the time of his visitation? Oh, Mother Mary, you have taught us what it means to visit. Let our visits not just be empty visits, but meaningful visits. To bring Jesus to those whom we visit and to change their lives positively. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Happy Feast.